What is up guys, my name is Jared and today I'm going to be bringing you the third episode of my Learning to Edit series. In this episode I'm going to be covering Twixter syncing and After Effects. I have my song ready right here so I'm just going to preview this for you guys quick. So as you can see I have all my markers um, synced out. If you guys want to know how to put markers and everything that will be in my first episode. So I will link that in the description, you guys can check that out. And I have my clip, basically what I did here was pre-compose it, um, put markers where the shots are, cut it when he's done reloading, cut the kill cam and put markers, a marker where the second shot is. So I'm going to drag that into this composition. I'm trying to get this done pretty quick because I have homework and stuff and it's like 10 o'clock right now. So I don't want to stay up too late, so I need to finish this quick. So basically I'm going to drag this over to where the first beat is and then when he's done reloading here I'm gonna go to edit split layer and then go to the kill cam edit split layer again and delete this middle bit right click on these two markers and get rid of those we don't need them you can press control shift E to split layer but I can't because I'm recording so I'm just gonna go to edit split layer and you guys can use Twixter or Twixter Pro it's a plug-in for After Effects, it's not free. There's ways to get it for free, but I'm not going to show you guys how to do that. If you look it up, there's tons of tutorials, so you could get that pretty easily. I have Distrim, which is made by Horizon Anime. It's basically a plugin for After Effects. Um, it's really cheap. I think it's only two euros on his cell phone, so I will put that in the description, so you guys can buy that from him if you want it. It's amazing because, as you can see, if I put it on, usually when he's spinning, there will be a ton of uh, warping and distortion and as you can see there's no warping whatsoever so this is simply amazing for editing it's best for trick shots but it's really good for sniping as well so this is really important you guys can go get this if you want you don't necessarily need it but I really like using it and it's helped me get my edits a lot cleaner looking so we're gonna get right into this first for the 59 FPS smoothest I'm gonna set that to 50 I'm going to go back one frame to before he shoots. I'm going to set it to 100. Press U to see my keyframes. Right click. Keyframe assistant. Easy ease. You can press F9 if you want. I can't because that's what I'm using as one of my hotkeys for recording. But now I'm going to set the speed to 175. I'm going to copy this. Make sure you turn the sound off for your layers. You don't want that. Um, so I'm going to copy that. Paste it on all these beats. I'm going to preview the song quick and see where I want it to end. Alright, so I'm going to have it end right here. So I'm going to split this and delete that bit. And then I'm going to go in between these, set it to 50, copy this, uh, paste it. And this is a pretty big area in between it, so it's really smooth. I'm going to select these, go to the graph editor. I'm going to click this, or click the first keyframe, I'm going to drag each one of these to the side, and that'll basically make it more gradual, it'll go down fast and then gradual, and then go up gradual and back up fast, um, so that makes it a lot smoother. I do this with all my keyframes, and it just makes it look a lot nicer, so I really recommend you do this. It's not necessarily required, but I mean it helps a lot, so I would do that. And now I'm going to preview this for you guys quick, and I will be back when it's done previewing. Alright guys, so it's done previewing, and I'll show you what it looks like so far. It's not too noticeable, but it looks pretty nice. I mean, once you have pan crop and everything, it'll be pretty noticeable. So now we're going to move on to a cinematic. I thought I should show you a cinematic, just because it's a little bit different from clips. And so basically I pre-composed my cinematic. Um, what I do is I add a tint set it to 25 and then I add a sharpen and set that to 25 and that just makes it look more nicer I think or like more clean and crisp so I'm gonna add that in I'm gonna drag it to where I want it to start probably about there I'm going to split the layer delete the beginning go to the end split the layer and delete the end for my cinematics I usually do um, only one beat just because that makes it flow a little bit better and um, I'm going to do that for this. Sometimes I'll do more than one, but usually it's just one beat. So 
So I'm going to put this to 50 again. So keyframe the speed at 100, a frame before it starts. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. I'm going to set this to about 800 since this is a uh, 0.1 speed. Maybe I'll do 1,000 just so it starts out like normal speed. And then I will put this at the end and I'll go to the middle. Set it to about 200. And then I will select all these keyframes and I will do the graph editor. So that'll make it look more smooth. And I'm going to preview this quick as well. So I will be back when this is done. All right, so the cinematic is done. I will show you that right now. It looks pretty nice. So as you can see, that looks pretty nice. It's really clean and pretty smooth. So I really like that. I'm going to drag the kill cam down now. I'm going to find a beat where I want to sync that. So I'm going to press, if you guys have a number pad on your keyboard, press the period key or the dot key, whatever you want to call it. And that will preview the audio. So I'm going to have it sh have him shoot right here. And as you can see, if I go to right here, he's already in the middle of his shot. So I'm going to press Control Alt T for time remapping. Make a keyframe where he shoots. Press I to go to the beginning. Make another keyframe. Then I'm going to go back here to where this clip starts. I'm going to drag this over. And I'm going to go right about here. Set a keyframe. I'm going to drag this forward as well. And I will preview this for you guys so you can see it. All right, so this is done. Basically, why I do this is because kill cams in Black Ops 2 are super slow. In other games like MW2 or MW3, it's not as slow. But in this game, it's really slow. So I'm going to... And as you can see, that makes it quite a bit faster. So it'll be easier to Twixter sync. So I'm going to split this layer, delete the first bit, and then I'm going to preview this again to see where I want it to end. So I'm going to have it end right here. So I'm going to go to edit split layer again, delete the end layer. I'm going to get distrim on this. Uh, set this to 50. Go one frame before it starts. Keyframe it at 100. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And what I do, I do the same thing I did before, 175 and then 50 in the middle. The reason I do this is because, as you can see, since I had this synced up before, if I do this correctly, the shot will already be synced. So I won't have to mess with the settings at all. And as you can see, it's a little bit warpy. D Twixter Pro will be a lot more warpy than this, but if it's warpy like that, you can just bump the frame rate up to a thousand and that will make it virtually no warping so that's what I recommend I do that sometimes usually I don't have to but if I if there is some warping that's what I'll usually do so as you can see this is synced more or less it's pretty accurate and it's not perfect but it's pretty accurate so what I'm gonna do is preview this for you guys and then I will get on to the giveaway at the end of this all right, so I'm going to preview this for you guys. Um, and then I'm going to... See, after he shoots, it's a little bit slow. So what you can do is make this a little bit faster, like 275 if you need to. So I'm going to preview this again, and it should look a little bit better. So I'm going to show you guys this preview, and like I said, after this, I'm going to be having the Twitter giveaway I had about a week ago so um, that will be at the end of this if you guys want another one let me know and I will put that tweet in the description if I do one I'll probably this should be going up Monday so I will have that Monday night I will put that tweet up so look out for that I'll have my Twitter in the description so you can follow that and wait for the tweet I'll probably do another 20 retweets to win like I did for this one and now here's the preview Alright, so that looks pretty nice. It doesn't have any paint crop or anything, so it doesn't look too great. So if you guys want a paint crop tutorial, let me know. Um, and I will do that. So now I'm going to get on to the giveaway. Alright, so basically what I did for the giveaway 
was tweet out a few hours after my video came out. Leave a like and comment on my new upload. Retweet when done with proof. One person will win everything for my selfie. And I said, um, choosing winner at 20 retweets. I got 21 retweets. Um, so one person is going to win. So I'm going to put 1 through 21 for the random number. I'm going to generate it. It looks like number 12. So we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to start. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So as you can see, we got Jones. Um, he is the winner of my giveaway. So I will have, I will DM him with the link to all my selfie stuff. So congratulations, Jones. If you guys want more of these giveaways, let me know and I will have them. And um, on Thursday, I should be having the motion tracking tutorial. I was gonna have that before, but I just haven't had time to make it. It's one of those that have taken a long time. So I'm gonna DM Jones right now with the links to all my selfie stuff. So congratulations, and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Peace.